it is to man. So I'm just so excited about what God is getting ready to do in the house today. Amen. Can we just wave our hands in this sanctuary? God is sending a refreshing this morning. He's sending us up. The refresher is here. Hallelujah. The refresher is here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we welcome you in this place today. We welcome you in New Hope Fellowship, oh God. Lord, we just glorify you. We magnify you this morning. We give you glory this morning. Lord, we thank you that the glory of the Lord is resting in this place on today, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that every need is met in both services oh God we thank you right now we thank you for the anointing that destroys every yoke oh God we thank you right now Lord we thank you that as the people come in Lord God that their needs are already being met oh God because they chose to meet you here and Lord we thank you Lord we thank you for the thickness of your glory in this place today we thank you that the glory is going to rest upon your people like never before <coughs> we desire your glory we desire your presence we desire you Lord not things we desire you Lord I pray God that today that your presence will be tangible that, that your presence will be tangible that people will be healed delivered and set free just because we're in your presence let your manifested glory desire you. Hey God, thank you. We thank you for a push in the spirit today. We thank you that the worship, that the praise will be easy. Yeah, that we will just enter in. He, we will just enter it. It will be easy. No prompting. We thank you for participation. We thank you for participation, Lord. Eh, glory, glory to your name, Lord. We choose to participate with you today. We thank you. Now, Lord, have your way. You have preeminence in this place to do what you want to do. Anything you feel you need to change, Lord, change. Thank you. Amen, amen. Amen. Well, welcome to New Hope Fellowship in East Cleveland. With signs, miracles, and wonders follow. Welcome, Facebook. We love you. Welcome, YouTube. We love you. Hey, we are three church. We are one church in three locations. Amen. We got the East Cleveland location, which is our main campus. We have our West Side location, which is pastored by Apostle. Uh, Rachel Gross, and then we also have our Atlanta location. Amen. Amen. We are international, right? We do have one. Do we have one in Africa as well? Because we forget to we forget to mention them. So we also have New New Hope in four locations. Actually, Amen. Amen. I am so excited this morning. We're gonna ask that. Um, Apostle Carl would give us a scripture this morning. Amen. God bless you, sir. So good to see you this morning. You looking dapper as ever. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. While we're waiting for Apostle Carl, we're going to have a uh, let the, let Carl speak. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I should have my Bible on. I guess that's act right. I guess we're just acting right. There you go. Bible, Bible. There you go. All right. Let's get Psalm 8 on, on the screen here. This iPad is acting up. Act like an Android. We'll put them in timeout. O oh Lord, our Lord, O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth who has set his glory above the heavens. Number two. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings he has ordained strength because of thy enemies and thou might still be enemies of the avenger. Father God, in the name of Jesus, the word of God has been blessed. Shall I let the prophet speak to him? Or? <laughs> All right. Uh, I hear the Lord say, set time. It is our set time. Time is now. The fruit is ready to be picking. Be ready for your harvest. Be ready for your increase. Because this is a set time. That's the word of the Lord. morning um <clears throat> so i actually heard two things on on today um I, I literally just heard the second thing and i'll get to the first one in a minute but i heard the lord say begin again so many people have started things didn't see things come to fruition but he says begin it again it's okay for things to start over lots of times people feel like failures when they have to begin again and start something afresh but God said, begin again, try again. And in addition with that, he said, dream again. He said so many, it's almost like I saw, you know how when a person has lawn care and weeds start to come into their lawn and it starts to make the other part of your grass look bad and it kind of chokes it out. Some people I can discern in this time that some people's dreams have been like like that those those weeds that have come up and they've kind of been snuffed out but i heard the lord saying as you begin again and dream again he's gonna blow fresh on that he said i'm a promise keeper i can't lie he said i keep every single promise i've ever made to you even when it doesn't look like it's coming to pass amen going to have one more Apostle Prue, could you please? Amen, amen, amen. Um, as my sister was speaking, I heard the Lord say, even when you are faithless, he still will remain faithful. We will not deny himself. Amen. The Lord said he's going to show himself faithful to you. Um, even when you are faithless, he said he remains faithful because he will not deny himself. He says, he's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he shall repent. He said, the things he's spoken to you, he shall bring them to pass. He said, keep hoping and keep believing. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is here. Our God is here. The Lord is here, the refresher is here, new life is here, new love is here, our God is here, the 
King is here. The Lord is here. New light, new hope, new dreams. Right here, right now. So believe again. And dream again. And start today, dream again, and reach again, believe again. It starts today, a refreshing is here, new anointing is here. A new dawning is here today. New day, new way. Love is here. His love. A new day is here. Believe again. You can breathe again. Believe again. And breathe again. And it's a new day. It's a new day. Hello, new day. Believe again. Receive again. It's a new day. It's a new day. Let go, let go, let go. Let go. It will take some grabbing, but it's here for you today. I have come to fulfill it. I have come to grant it, but you have to reach for it, and it's here for you today. Whatever you need, it's in the atmosphere. But you have to reach and get it. So don't leave without it today. Reach for it. Believe for it. But it is here for you. It's here for you today, today, today. It's here for you today, today, today. It's here for you. It's here for you. It's here for you. It's here for you. I'm here for you. Grab it. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. I came for you. But
but you must grab it, grab it, reach for it, don't leave it, reach for it, it's here for you, it's here for you, I'm here for you, I'm here for you, reach up and grab it, reach for it, grab it, reach for it, take it, reach for it, it's for you, take it. Take it, reach for I brought it reach for here it. for you reach for it. today. Stretch forth, reach for it, reach for it, stretch for it, reach for it, reach for it, stretch for it, reach for it, reach for it, stretch for it, stretch for it, stretch for it, reach 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 for it. Reach for it, reach for it, reach for it, reach for it, reach for it. Reach for it, reach for it, reach for it, reach for it, reach for it. Stretch for it, stretch for it, stretch for it. Reach for it, reach for it, reach for it, reach for it, reach for it. Reach for it, reach for it, reach for it, reach for it, reach for it. You should reach for it. It's in your reach. Just reach. It's in your reach. Just reach. Reach for it. 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 Stretch for it, almost there. Reach for it, reach for it, reach for it, reach for it, reach for it. Don't be weary. Don't be regret. Your peace is here. Your peace is here. Your joy is here. Your joy is here. Reach for it. Your joy is here. Your joy is here. Reach for it. Reach for it. Your joy is here. Your hope is here. Your hope is here. Your hope is here. Your hope is here. Reach for it. Reach for it. Reach for it. Reach for it. Healing is here. Reach for it. Your healing is here. Reach for it. Healing is here. Your healing is here. Reach for it. Healing is here. Reach for it. Your healing is here. Reach for it. Peace is here. Reach for it. Your peace is here. Reach for it. Reach for it. Your peace is here. Reach for it. Reach for it. Your peace is here. Reach for it. Love is here. Reach for it. Reach for Love is here. Love is here. Your love is here. Everything is here. Everything you need is here. Reach for it. Reach for it. Reach for it, reach for it, believe for it, believe for it, believe for it, believe for it. It's here, it's here, it's here, it's here. Reach for it, reach for it, reach for it, 
reach for it. It's here, it's here, it's here, cause he's here, it's here. The instruction in the prophetic song was reach for it. This morning, God, we said that we were going to participate with the Lord. And so if we're going to participate with the Lord, that means that there is an action that we must take on our part. Amen. In order for God to come into the room. Uh, in order for the glory to fall like God wants it to fall, amen, uh, because God wants to meet us at a certain place. Eh? But if there is no participation, there's only a limited thing that God can do. So the song said, reach for it. That means you have to make some type of effort. Eh? Randama shot. You have to make some type of effort. That means that you have to move, 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 move. When the Spirit say move. So we're going to reach for it again. So that means every woman, man, boy, child, girl, if you have two feet, you have legs, that means you need to be on your feet. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Everyone needs to be on one accord because God wants to do something in the house. Amen. You need something from the Lord. Somebody's life is at state. So that means we need to pull on them. We love him, right? So that means we need love is an action word. Right? Love is the action word. So it takes two. Eh? It takes two in a relationship. I didn't know I was about to go this way, but I just believe I'm on the right track this morning. So we're going to start again. We're going to reach for it. Psalmist, reach for it. So this is what I need to happen this morning. I need every praise and worship team to come up. Hallelujah. And we're going to enter in. We're going to do this thing the way God has called us to do it. There is an order to praise and worship. Eh? You interceding for me? Hallelujah. So we need our hearts to be right. Yeah. Come on, let's do this thing again. Let's reach for it. Let's reach for it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's move around. Move around. Move around. Don't, don't, not in your comfort zone. That's what God wants us to do. Move out of our comfort zone. Hallelujah claim new territory in the spirit. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't wait on the worshipers and the, and the dancers to, uh, to worship you for you alone. Come on. Move around. Move around. Move around. Move around. Move. Come on. What y'all doing? Move. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Lord is here. He's here right now. He's here right now. He has everything you need. Just reach, just stretch, reach for it, reach for it, reach for it, it's here is he, what you need is here, what you need is here, it's raining down, reach for it, reach for it. 
reach for it. Reach for it. Reach for it. Reach for it. Reach for it. Reach for it. Reach for it. Reach for it. Reach for it. Reach for it. Whatever you need, you have to reach for it. 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 It's yours, it's yours. Reach for it. 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 Whatever you need. Reach for it. It's here today. Reach for it. So reach up and grab it. Reach for it. Whatever you need today. Reach for it. Whatever you need today. Reach for it. It's in the atmosphere. Reach for it. Reach up and grab it. Reach for it. But don't leave it here. Reach for it. It's yours. Reach for it. It's yours today. The Lord says, reach for it. Reach for it. Action, reach for it. Reach for it. If you really want to reach for it, reach for it. Reach up and grab it today. It. If you need love, reach for it. Reach for it. If you need peace, reach. Reach for it. Love, reach. Reach for it. Reach up and grab it. Reach for it. Reach. Reach, reach for it. Reach, reach for it. Reach up and grab it today. Reach for your love. Reach for healing. Reach for it. Reach for your peace. Reach for it. It's here, it's here. Reach for it. Everything is here. Reach for it. Everything you need. Reach for it. Everything you need today. Reach for it. Is here. Just reach. Reach for it. Reach and get it. Reach for it. Don't miss the moment. Reach for it. Don't miss your moment. Reach for it. It's your visitation time. Don't miss your moment. Reach for it. Don't miss your moment. Reach for it. Don't miss your moment. Reach for it. He's here. He's here. Reach for it. Reach for power. Reach for it. For more anointing. Reach for it. And for his glory, reach, for it. reach up and grab it. Reach for it. It's in the atmosphere. Reach for it. It's in this atmosphere. Reach for it. Don't leave without it. Reach for it. Because it's he. Reach for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Praise him now. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We want you, Lord. Amen. 
thank you, Father. Thank you. We appreciate your visitation today. We appreciate your love and your comfort on today. Amen. Well, I'm so excited. I'm not going to... Um, I'm not going to go any further. Um, <laughs> I'm so honored today um, to hear the word of God. You may be seated. Thank you so much. So honored today just to be in his presence. So honored. Um, I just want to give honor to the chief apostles of this house, Apostle um, Joseph and Sandra Prude, all of the leadership on today. Every visitor, amen. Every lay person, amen, amen. Every member. But today I'm so honored to hear the word. I'm very thirsty on this morning. Uh, our very own, I was getting ready to say, Apostle Little John. <laughs> Pastor Little John. I mean, there's so many, you know, you got so many hats that you wear. Pastor Corey Little John is going to bring the word today, and I'm so honored to hear from my brother. So get your hearts and your mind ready for the word of God. Amen. 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 Um, I just want to give honor and thanks to Apostle Sharice because exactly what you did was what I was going to do when I got up here is get everybody to reach into this next moment that you're going into. In order for us to get into a place, we have to have movement and reach for it. We expect God to do everything, but if you don't have no movement in or no, um, no fight in it, how can God do anything for you? There's a law that says uh, an object in motion stays in motion. So if you're not in motion or doing anything, how can God add to what, you're, what you have or what you're doing? So in this moment, in this time, it's going to take movement for you to get anywhere. Amen? Amen. So I thank you, Apostle Sharice. I, I, I applaud you. Because a lot of people was looking at her like, why is she doing all this? But she had a purpose this morning to get us to a place where we will have breakthrough. She had a purpose this morning to get us to a place where we can have an impartation from God. Amen? Amen. Let's get started. Before I get started, I want to honor our dad and mom, uh, the chiefs of this house, Joseph and Sandra Pro. Um. On the way here this morning, we're still down to one car because it's a whole situation. But on the way to church this morning, um, me and my daughter caught uh, a lift, and I pulled a dad move, right? I started prophesying to the driver, <laughs> and I got him saved. Amen. So we're having a conversation back and forth, and I'm prophesying to him. And he stopped me. He said, that's crazy. I asked him about his relationship with his father. He said, my dad just came back into my life this week. Wow. Wow. So having an impartation with this young man, I don't know how old he was, but he said, I believe in a higher calling, but I don't know my purpose. I don't know where I'm going. I don't, I don't have no direction, but everything I prophesied to him lined up, line upon line, precept upon precept, because I stepped into the anointing that, that was imparted from God, but cultivated by Joseph Pru. Right. Amen? Right. Amen. So we all have to get into that mode where we do what Joe would do. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want to give honor to the Smiths because they Woo! called me to do this, but they also do so many things behind the scenes that nobody would ever know about. Amen. They do things that y'all don't even know about or I don't even know about. They handle business. They put out fires. They do a lot. So let's honor them today. Let's all give them a hand clap. Uh, I want to give honor to all the leaders. Whatever you stand in or whatever you do, you have purpose. I just want to give you honor. Everybody deserves honor. Whether you're a new member or you're a leader that's been here 30 years, everybody deserves honor. So I give you honor today. Amen? Amen. 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 Lastly, I want to give honor to my wife. 
she's doing what she does, being a doctor today. Amen. I've never, they say I work hard, but that woman works harder than me. Amen. So I give her honor today because she's doing what she's called to do. Not only does she have to cover her normal hospital today, but she picked up another hospital to cover, and she's doing what she said she wouldn't do again. <laughs> Amen. So I give her honor. I love you if you're watching. <laughs> I love you. Um, before I get started, I just want to, um, I want us to all get in the place because the, in this season, the enemy is attacking relationships. The enemy is attacking um, your friendships. So if y'all will indulge me for a minute, let's all stand. I want to personally repent and say I'm sorry to anybody in this room, on this live, in my family that I have done something wrong to. That I have said I was going to do something and didn't do it. I personally want to say I'm sorry. I apologize. If I offended you, I apologize. But I want y'all to do it with me. So whatever is on your mind or in your heart, let's clear it today so we can hear clearly from God. Amen. 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 So you ain't got to say their name. You ain't got to say they, who they are. Just say, I apologize. I apologize. I repent for not being who I said I was going to be. I apologize for dropping the ball. And I promise you, as I move forward, I will do my best to be who you need me to be. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's all be seated. Now that we got all that out the way. Um, I'm going to talk to you guys today. The title of my message is called Through the Narrow Gate. Um, in, in, in life, you got to make decisions on whether you're going to go left or you're going to go right. Are you going to take this path or are you going to take that path? Am I going to go to school or am I going to start a job? Everything has a path to an area. It can lead you to success. It can lead you to lack. It can lead you to destruction. It depends on which area or lane that you take. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's start with Matthew 7 uh, and the NIV verses 13 and 14. That's not it. Oh, yeah, 13 and 14. You got too many up there. It says, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to light. And only a few find it. The wide gate is easy to take. That's the, the road that a lot of people in life take is the wide gate because it's easier, right? The wide gate leads you to your own self-righteousness, right? Trying to do things to impress others, trying to be self-dependent. Uh, what do I need all that God for? I got this. I'm capable of doing what I need to do. I can go to school and do what I want to do because I'm capable myself, right? The Y gate leads to it's an all about me narrative. I'm going to take this road because I don't have any uh, accountability. I'm going to take this Y gate because it's easier. Nobody's watching me over there because it's too many people to account for in the Y path. I could take the Y path path because um, nobody's looking over me or showing me my flaws or what I'm doing wrong. The Y gate leads you to material gain and has no real value for you. Right? The Y gate brings out your, um, your pride, your ego. It shows you that I'm better than everybody else. I can see this person here because this gate is wide. This path is wide. I can see all these people, but I'm better than that one. I'm better than that one. I'm better than that one. I'm better than that one, right? The wide gate gives you a view of it's all about me, 
right? But it says the narrow gate leads to life and only a few find it, right? Only a few find it. Why do only a few find it? Because the narrow gate is the complete opposite. The narrow gate is so much harder. You want to know why? Because there's no room for you to have any inkling about yourself. The narrow gate does not give you the room or the opportunity to think about who you are better than. The narrow gate only focuses on who you are and who God called you to be. The narrow gate shows you you. The narrow gate gives you room to make mistakes, but you have to focus on what's in front of you because if you focus on those mistakes that's close by, that's where you're going to stop. Right? The Hebrew word, uh, 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 the Hebrew word in the passage there for narrow is tiblo, which means a compressed way to be pressed hard, to be troubled, to be afflicted, to be distressed. It's a press. The only way to success is to be pressed. The only way to success is to be pressed. Let's take a trip through the narrow pass, right? The narrow pass will cause you to to focus not only on what you're doing wrong, but it strips things away from you. The narrow pass and the narrow gate may not be wide enough for you to fit through, but it's the path that you have to take in order to get to success. It could be thorns on this path. It could be bushes on this path. path. It could be trees on this path, but it's the path that you have to take to lead to life. Right? So on this path, it's going to strip away all your bad habits. So my procrastination is going to be stripped away. My ego is going to be stripped away. My thinking of me being better than everybody that I'm around will be stripped away. My lackadaisical attitude is stripped away. Procrastination of, oh, I'll get to it eventually, will be stripped away. Let me tell you all something. I'm in school for psychology, and when I tell you that this has been one of the most challenging paths that I've ever been on, because it's taken me to an area where I have never been. Normally in school, I can go in and be like, oh, this is easy, I can blow through it. I blew through the first two degrees I got because it was something that I was familiar with, but taking this narrow path of diving into something that I have no experience, not only was it scary at first, but it's rewarding because it's breaking my mindset of how I view things. Right? In this narrow path, it strips away your attitude. You lose the right to be right. You lose the right to be right. My attitude cannot be conducive in this narrow path because my attitude was an attitude of anger. My attitude was an attitude of, I don't need y'all, I got this. But in this narrow path, you'll see that you need people more than you think you do. Everybody needs help. Everybody needs a lender hand. I don't know nobody in this room that has not ever reached out for help. I don't know none of us that was born with a silver spoon. Maybe you, so. Uh, I don't know nobody in this room who father gave them a loan to start a business. I don't know nobody in this room who had the blueprint on how to be a parent. I don't know nobody that has a blueprint in this room on how to be married. 
or how to be a minister or how to be a pastor. They can give you the guidelines on what you should do, but they cannot show you what you're going to go through. What depths are you going to deep into? What areas are you going to fail at? What areas are you going to be successful at? Nobody has this blueprint to give you to show you all the flaws and mistakes that you'll make. Right? In this narrow path, it strips away your pride and your ego. If your pride and ego aren't broke, you're going to be stuck in this narrow path for the rest of your life. Pride leads to destruction. Ego leads to destruction. If I feel like I know it all or I'm better than you, I have no room to grow or be successful. I learned from Swoop because he's been in the industry that I've been in. I learned from Tony because he knows things that I don't know. I learned from Carl on how to operate business, how to do things with integrity and purpose, yeah. right? Yeah. I learned from Steve on how to be more in touch with my feelings, <laughs> how to love That's my good. wife. It's the truth. I never was this emotional until I encountered a Steve. Right? You teach men how to strip away their pride, their ego, the hardness that we have been placed in from birth and teach us how to be more in tune with our feelings and our spirit. Right? It's necessary. In this narrow path, uh, this one is hard. It will strip you away from people that you're not supposed to be around. Because you go down this narrow path, and we can't walk in this path shoulder to shoulder because it's not enough room. So either I'm going to drop you and let you walk behind me, or I'm going to push you through so you can show me how to get to the next place. Right? I had to push my wife through 10 years of schooling in order for her to get to where she wants to be so she can reach back and grab me to do the exact same thing and get to the place where I want to be mentally, spiritually, physically, and emotionally, right? I never wanted to go to school for anything past my basic degree, which was constructional engineering and business administration. That was it. I was good. I was content. But I had a, a vision one day of me doing more than working with these and work with this. Come on, sir. Right? So I'm having this conversation with God and myself like, what path am I supposed to take? What am I supposed to do? The only thing I know is how to use this to make these work. But how can I use this to produce money where these will never have to move? Right? So I had a conversation, and I bring it up to my wife about going in the site. She said, you know, I had this same conversation with God this morning in my own prayer time. And I was on my phone looking up degree programs for you to go into. And I was asking myself, why am I looking up degree programs for my husband to go to instead of myself? Because sometimes you're supposed to birth an idea but not carry it. You can birth a purpose but not have the ability to carry it out to its success. So she planted that seed in me for now me. I'm going to school for my doctorate in psychology to do everything that I can do with this instead of having to work with these. But it took for me to push her through the gate and get her through that small, narrow, passageway way of staying up late at night crying because I can't finish these assignments of having 10 and 12 page papers due every single week and still having to operate as a mother, still having to operate as a wife, still operate as a minister, still operate as a daughter. But in order for her to get through the narrow pass, somebody had to push her to get through. We have the ability and the capability to walk this narrow path alone, but it's easier if somebody's behind you, pushing you to get through to life. Right? If I never had nobody pushing me to start a business, it would have never happened. I seen the path. I seen the capability. 
but it was easier to take this wide path of applying for a nine to five than taking this narrow path and starting a business. This path is easy because I can see everything that's open, what I'm going to have to jump over, what I'm going to have to swing around to not hit. But in this narrow path, it's dark. In this narrow path, I don't know what's coming up on me until I get there. In this narrow path, I can't see past five feet in front of me. You know why? Because God is the person that's going to lead you through that path. He is the light that's going to give you to get past all the stumbles that you're going to make, all the heartache that you're going to endure, all the lack that you'll endure. God is the source that will get you through, right? These thorns that you're going to hit, they hurt. Life hurts. Anything with purpose takes sacrifice. I tell my son all the time, if it was easy, everybody would do it. If it was easy, everybody would have it. But it's harder to do something that you're not known for doing or capable of doing to get to success. Right? I talk to him all the time because he's always focused on, well, I can do this because I'm good at it. I understand that. But what are you going to do that produces something greater than what you're good at? Being good at something that can only take you so far. But challenging yourself to go further is much harder. He's gifted at music. He can play any song that comes to mind because... He has an ear for music. But when it takes time to practice and read music, at first it was hard for him, but now he's gifted at that area too. Right before he went to Africa, he had um, a sight reading competition. Didn't even know they did these in high school, where they take you to a room, sit you down in front of um, a music stand, and they just drop a random piece of music in front of you and make you read it. Now, me, I said, not my son. He's not about to do that. I don't even know if the boy can read music. But the school itself, they all placed first out of 20 schools in the district of sight reading. He was one of the leaders in the trombone section for sight reading, something that I didn't even know he was capable of. But when I pushed him to go further than just listening and playing music, but to learn how to read music, it took him to a point where he produced something that nobody thought he was capable of doing. Right? So what are you going to reach for that's going to produce something bigger than what you're capable of doing in this moment? Right? Another thing that's going to be stripped off in this narrow path is dead things that aren't producing. So areas of your life where you see no fruit, God is going to cut it off and replant it so it can produce later in life. I heard a guy say something this weekend to his children that blew my mind. He said, do everything in your life with purpose. Because one day you're going to stand up in front of a group of your peers and receive accolades because you pushed through when you didn't want to do. He said, if you fell 100 times, do it 101 times. Because maybe the 101 time will be the time that you're successful. But if you do things just to get by, you'll never reach success. I can't tell you how many times I failed at doing business. I can't tell you how many times I failed at going to college. I can't tell you how many times I failed at at being a parent because I just did not know. Right? How many times have we failed at our finances or failed at our prayer life or failed at relationships with other people because we did not know? Right? It was something that was dead, not producing, but God had to rip it off for it to grow. I'm not saying I'm the best parent, and I'm sure Trinity will agree, but I'm purposeful in everything I do. I enlighten my kids for something that I never got because my parents didn't know. 
and their parents didn't know. And what they don't know and what they can't give you, you can't pass on to the next generation. My parents helped set me up for a plateau that their parents couldn't set them up to because they didn't understand. Now, me and my wife are building an empire that our kids can stand on, and their success doesn't have to start at ground zero. Their success doesn't start with, well, I got to figure out how I'm going to get this money. No, take this and run with it. Take this money and run with it because I've produced, I've went through the narrow path so you don't have to take that path to get to success. Right? I'm going to struggle so you don't have to struggle. I told y'all many a times my goal in life is to set up a business for every one of my kids so they can make the decision whether I'm going to go to school or I'm going to run this business. But I have options that I don't have to struggle to do either one. If I'm going to go to school, it's going to be paid for. If I'm going to run this business, it's already successful because my father and mother went through the narrow path. Right? Yes. That's our goal in life is to set the next generation up for success. But if we're not willing to take the narrow path, they'll follow us to the wide path that leads to destruction. The broad road leads to destruction, and so many of our parents were in an area where it led us to destruction. We got generations now that are led to destruction because it's easier to take the wide path than the narrow path. It's easier for our kids to get influences by social media than take the influence of the people that we surround them by. It takes time and effort for us to influence the next generation. Kids will never know what they're doing if we don't expose them to be bigger and better things, but we let social media do it. Or we let the TV do it. Or we let their friends expose them to the wider path when the narrow path leads to light. Let's network. Let's show these kids what we do for a living so they can get exposure on what they want to do for a living, right? Amen. Me and Mike talked about a mentoring program that shows kids how we operate, what we do and the why behind what we do so they can see if they want to do it, right? I went to school for construction engineer and hated it. It was 54 people in my graduating class. Four of them operate in the area, oh, I'm sorry, six of them operate in the area that they went to school for. Why? Because we had no exposure to a different lifestyle. We were going off what we thought was our vision and our goals. We went off what we thought that we wanted to do because we were shown the wide path. You guys can do anything and everything that you want to do. That's not true. Everybody's purposed for something. You cannot do any and everything you want to do. You have to do what you're purposed to do. Right? I thought I was going to be drawing uh, blueprints and sitting behind a desk for the rest of my life. Not true. I thought I was going to be the guy that walk on the site and tell everybody what to do. Not true. I told myself that I would never work inside of a kitchen picking up pots and pans. None of that. Not true. Because I'm only gifted to do what I'm purposed to do. I was purposed to cook. I was purposed to work with my hands. I was purposed to have multiple business because I'm gifted at making them work. Even now with my wife, she's debating on going to med school. Why? Because she was purposed to be a doctor. Yes, she is a doctor now. Don't get it twisted. She's definitely a doctor. But she still has to have a boss that she answers to by the law of Ohio. Right? But if she takes the next step and go to med school, she is the final boss. But it was something that she was purposed to do. I'm talking to her mother, and she said since Kelly was the age of two, maybe four, somewhere in that age range, she told 
everybody that she was going to be a doctor. She went to school, failed at it. She tried again, failed at it. She tried again, and she succeeded. Starting as an STNA where she thought, this was it for me. I'm good enough. I got a job. I'm making money. Not so. The, the wide path was, I can just stay here and be an STNA because I make good money. Yes, you make good money for that moment. But there's a thing in life called inflation. There's a thing in life called children. There's a thing in life that costs increase and a better, splay, a better place than where you're at now. And if you think that that little area that you're operating in now is enough, it won't be. Just stick around, I promise you. We found the house, what was that, 2010, and we said, this is it, we good. We stay in here, not so. I think we've moved five, six times since then. But we're in a place now where we're comfortable because, we, because we've made it from a point of just getting by or just living where it's good enough to stretch in ourselves to live beyond our means in order to have our children in a place where they're comfortable to go to a school district where they're comfortable, where not only do they see people that look like them, but they see people that look like uh, other races and under genders. They're surrounded by culture that teaches them there's more than just being black. There's more than just being uh, me and going to school and getting what I want to do. There's more to me than just what I've been taught by my parents. Now my influence to get through the gate is still my parents because they had to push me through to success, but I'm exposed to what on the other side, the wide path of what I don't want to be involved in. We got kids going to school with transgenders at the age of 10. I'm gonna steal Bobby's word, make it make sense. But we're, ex we're letting our children be exposed to the wider path when the narrow path will lead to life. We take our children and expose them to things. We take our children and take trips when we can. It's not always extravagant, but we expose them to a different life. So when they get on their own path, they can say, well, my parents did this. I like that. What do I have to do with my nine to five to be able to live that lifestyle? Right? How can I work my hand to get to where I want to be and be successful? This one right here, I hope either she's a millionaire or she marries somebody with money because that girl loves the finer life. <laughs> it is a good thing, but it's my fault because I exposed her to it. But now I'm paying for it because she can't. She wants shoes every two weeks. I don't. I, I ain't got it like that right now. She wants crab legs every Friday. I ain't got it like that. This is the only child I know that there's a kid's birthday party. We say, Trini, what you want for your friends to eat? We want a crab boil. We? It's 30 of y'all. No. I don't got it like that. But exposing, to her, exposing her to a better life makes her reach for what she wants. We just, with the help of y'all and some other people, we just sent my son to Africa. I opened an experience for him that he probably would have never took had we not reached to make it happen. So now his focus is, how can I get back to Africa? How can I make that trip happen for myself? Now he has motivation to walk through the narrow path and to reach for success. His focus has changed. I, I hear people say all the time, when you go to Africa and you come home, your life is never the same. But when I tell you his focus has never been what it is now, it's, it's just mind-blowing. He came home and he said, um, the life that we live here in America is good but they live in peace in Africa. Wow. 
the people are nicer. I didn't feel out of place in Africa. I felt like I was a part of what was going on. So now he's reaching on how can I get back to that instead of living the life over here of the wide path that leads to destruction. Right? His focus has been different. He wants to make sure that he takes another trip to Africa. But the only way he can do it is to produce something that he never thought capable. To reach for something that he never thought was capable. He'd been talking about going to Africa since he was two. And I just thought it was a kid being a kid. He had a chance to go to Paris last year. We couldn't afford it. But he was like, I'll pass. And a month later, they said, we're taking a trip to Africa. He said, sign me up. I don't know how we're going to get there. I don't know how it's going to be paid, but I'm going. Yeah. Right? So me seeing the spark in him helped me push him to where he wanted to be. He reached back and grabbed me to help me produce the finances to get him to go to Africa. But it was taking a narrow path that didn't feel good of working more than one job at a time to make sure he was able to get to where he wanted to go. Having his mom not only work her regular job, but pick up side jobs to produce so he can go to Africa. Exposing him to the narrow path made us readjust our focus and go through the narrow path with him to produce what we never thought possible. I never thought that I would send one of my kids to a foreign country before I did or before I went, right? I never had that desire to go nowhere else because I never seen my parents go nowhere else. My parents took trips all across the country. But I never seen them leave the continent. But exposing your kids to something else builds desire and passion and focus for them to do something greater than what you did. I'm traveling, or I've traveled in college with the marching band. I went all across this country, seen every part that you didn't even think was capable. I went to school in Louisiana and seen some of the weirdest things I've ever seen in my life. Right? But it's exposure of what goes on behind the closed doors. Right? But my mom having a desire for her children to go to college pushed me to a point where I was able to do it. Then I turned around and pulled my sister through. Then I turned around and pulled my brother through. Now I have three more brothers that we are all on the other side of this narrow path trying to pull them through. I have a brother that's in the, in the Air Force coming up on his third year, but he would have never got to that point because without seeing somebody get through the narrow path. Having him talk to Jeremiah probably was the best decision that I could have done for his success. He's happy. He's producing, he's flourishing, but he never thought it was capable unless he seen somebody do it. Or he talked to somebody that produced through the narrow path of going through basic training, of being away from your family, of not being able to, to just get up and go see your mother. But having somebody that produced and went through the same narrow path made it easier for him to come through because Jeremiah already blazed the trail. Taking a narrow path is not easy. It's not fun. It's not rewarding while you're going through. But when you get through the other side of going through that passage, you can look back and say, man, it's not as bad as I, can, I thought it was, but I'm going to reach back and grab this person. I'm going to reach back and grab this person. But if there's nobody on the other side of the narrow path guiding you or focusing you to get through, you'll never get through that path. Right? I never wanted to do this. Not never. I was cool when I came to this church working the sound, being it. That was it. I was good. Then back then, we didn't have no youth department, but Joe wanted to have a youth night. For what? We're good. You can do it. Right? 
got me in trouble. Pushed me to do something that I never thought capable. So I started coming from behind the sound booth to help. I started coming from behind the sound booth to prophesy. To help catch and deliver and set people free. But I was good behind the sound booth. I was good hiding back there because nobody could see me. I was good hiding back there because I could still do what I wanted to do because I was in a wide path hidden where nobody could see me. But it took for Joe to take me back around to the narrow path to show me the way to life. Show me the way to be able to do what I'm doing today. To prophesy to the young man in the car that I had no clue was going through a difficult time. But it was Joe showing me the narrow path of how to make it happen. Of showing me that even when you're a man of God, you're going to go through trials. You're going to go through tribulations. You're going to be hurt. You're going to be abused. But as long as you keep going, success is on the other side. Right? I'm almost done. Let me get out your way. It's a thing in finance and banking called pass-through return. It's an interest rate that investors receive after all the deductions and fees have been paid out. I don't think y'all caught that. There's a return on investment called pass-through once all the fees and deductions that had to be made are made, you're paid out. So once you get past this point of paying your dues, of waiting your time, of sacrificing, of breaking off things that you never thought you was going to let go, there is a reward on the other side of it. There's paid interest off of what you deposited now in the future. Amen. What you're going through now is a deposit for your return on investment. The trials that you're going through is a return on investment for what you're going to go through. Right now we're down to one car, but it is a deposit on the return of investments when we can one day walk outside and say, well, I'm going to take this car today. Right? Going through school is a deposit right now for the return on investment when I can sit behind a desk and say, talk to me what you're going through. When I no longer have to work with these, but I can work with this. When I can let this produce money for me, that these never have to get in the way. What's your deposit for your return on investment? What are you going to deposit in this moment that is going to produce a harvest later on? Are you going to continue to walk the wide path where you can get away with virtually anything? Because there's no accountability. There's nobody focused on you. There's nobody checking in on you. There's nobody showing you your mistakes. You're able to just keep making them. But are you going to take this narrow path where somebody hovering over you seven days a week to make sure you stand on track? Where there's somebody behind you seven days a week making sure that you're continuing to move? Where there's somebody behind you checking to make sure you still have breath in your body. Where there's somebody behind you that's keeping you accountable for everything that's being cut off of you. Letting you know that you have to let this go in order to move forward. You caught on this thorn where it's grabbing your shirt and you refuse to pull and tear it off. You'd rather just let it sit there and keep you from moving forward. Let that person push you to rip that thorn off your shirt and keep moving forward. I can't tell you how many times I've been stuck by thorns and I just let them sit there because I thought it was a part of life. 
carrying around hate, frustration, anger for stuff that I couldn't change, but I knew it was a part of me, so I was going to carry that thorn. Not so. Have somebody accountable to you that can pull the thorns, sew up your wounds, and tell you to move forward. To take the things out of you that the thorns place, because in certain instances, thorns can be poisonous. And when you're po poked by the wrong thorn, it can produce an infection. There's something called staph that you only get by breaking the skin, by producing um, a bacteria in the skin level that can overtake your body. So are you going to let somebody heal your wounds and take the thorns out, or are you going to let staph come into your life and produce something that is going to overtake your body, mess with your mindset, and stop you from moving forward? I'd rather have somebody that's willing to take the thorns out, wrap my bandages, and keep pushing me. Take the thorns out and wrap my wounds and tell me to keep moving because it's not that bad. Take the thorns off, wrap my wounds, and tell me why did I stop. That was just one moment. Keep going forward. No matter what I want to do, if I get stagnant or don't want to do it, it only takes one call, phone call from Joe for me to turn my life around. I can be in the height of being mad, frustrated, pissed off. If Joe call, all that's changed. Right? That used to be, that reminds me, I, this guy told me this weekend, would you rather have somebody that could stop you in your tracks from destruction or not having somebody that was willing to stop you from going down the wrong path. Everybody should have somebody in their life that can stop you in your tracks from destruction. It used to be my grandfather, but he went on to be with the Lord. It used to be my wife, but I feel like I, I can overtake her. But Joe, <laughs> if Joe call, I'm stopped in my tracks because I'm accountable for my yes. behavior when I'm around Joe. Yes. I'm accountable for the things that I produce because it reflects on my father. Right? So have somebody in your life that they can pick up the phone and call you and stop you from going through destruction or stop you from making a mistake or stop you from destroying what you built. Amen? The older I get, the more I understand that that person was my wife all the time. Instead of me wanting her to tell me what to do, I felt like I'm supposed to be telling you what to do. Don't stop me from doing what I want to do. I'm the boss. No, we're the boss. We make decisions. We are in control. But if I can't heed to the warning that my white wife gives, we're both going down the road That's of destruction. Right. Right. Wasn't because in, instead of fighting me to stop, she's going to follow me. So if she can't stop me from going to, through destruction, I'm going to take me and all five of these kids right. through right. destruction. I'm going to lead all five of these kids to the wide path and just let them go and hope they produce. Or hope somebody don't influence them or take them into some other religion or take them down a, a path of smoking weed that leads to smoking other things. Or take them on this wide path to activate something that was already planted in them because of bloodline. I took the wide path and activated alcoholism. It was a full-blown alcoholic. Couldn't produce nothing in my life unless I had a drink. Felt like I wasn't a man unless I had a, a beer, some Crown Royal, or anything else dark in my cup. Right? 
But I took the wide path because it was easier. There was no accountability. There was nobody looking at me. But it was people doing the exact same thing, so I was comfortable. But I had to make a decision. Am I going to lead my family? Because I was an alcoholic with kids. I think it was only three of them, but I still had to produce something in them. Did I want to produce them following the same path of being an alcoholic, being able to produce life while being drunk? Or do I want to produce kids that can produce life, heal, deliver, and set people free from being drunk off of God, the spirit, and everything that he operates? Right? Which path do you want to take? You can take the wide path or you can take the narrow path. It's your decision. Nobody can make it for you. Right? I can't influence you. Melissa Steve can't influence you. Joe can't influence you. We can only show you the way. It's a thing in life called free will. You make the decision. Are you going left or are you going to go right? But the choice is yours. Right? Uh, one other scripture and then I'm going to get out of here. Uh, Psalms 23, uh, verse 4, in the NIV. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The Hebrew word in that scripture for valley is gay, which means what could be translated to a small, narrow gorge, or a small, narrow passageway. So even though I walk through this small, dark valley, this small, dark gate, this small, dark area, I will fear no evil. For you, for you are with me. So no matter what you do on this small, dark path, God is going to be with you. He's going to produce with you. He's going to suffer with you. He's going to love with you. He's going to experience joy with you because no matter what I walk through, you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So when I don't feel good on this path, God will comfort me. When I don't feel like I'm going anywhere down this path because I can't see in darkness, God is with me. He comforts me. He gives me support. He gives me motivation. He pushes me to get past this moment of fear. Because what does darkness produce? Fear. The fear of not knowing. The fear of no direction. The fear of not knowing what's coming next. But God comforts me. Amen? Amen. Naomi Rain uh, said in the song of Promises, in the middle of my storm, I will praise you. I will still bless you. When I'm in the middle of the road and I don't know which way to go, I will still bless you. Never forget your posture as you go down this dark, narrow road. No matter how hard it gets, no matter how uh, frustrated you get, no matter what you feel like, continue to bless the Lord for everything that he's producing. Never forget your posture as you walk down this narrow road. Apostle Nelson said this uh, Friday. He said the relationship has to be vertical before it can be horizontal. If I don't have a relationship with God, and let him take out of me everything that I'm going through to help him download love into me. I can never love horizontally. I can never move horizontally because vertically I have no connection. So let your relationship start vertically before you can do anything horizontally. Make sure your life vertically is in line before you try to move horizontally to produce anything, before you try to move horizontally to minister to somebody, make sure your relationship vertically is intact. 
Amen? Amen. 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 Um, last thing, and then I'm done. How is oil, olive oil made? First, it has to be harvested. It has to be picked. Somebody has to come and take it off the vine. Then it's taken to a processed plant where it's squeezed until there's no life left in it. And from that process, it goes through a filter where everything that was squoze is filtered through a process that catches all the things that it's not supposed to have in it. All the dirt, all the leaves, all, all of what it has been through is caught in this filter. And what's come out of that filter is olive oil. So are you going to let God come pick you? Take you through a process to where your squoze and everything in your life is stripped away. Where everything in you is taken from you and put through a filter so you can produce olive oil. Let's take the squeezing as reward. Let's take the filtration as reward. Because when you get through that filtration process, you're going to produce oil. Oil that can lead to life. Oil that can add nutrition to somebody. Oil that can cover the wounds of other people. Oil that can anoint and push forward. Oil that can make people come out of the situation that they're in and see life. Don't think you can just jump from the vine into the oil. Don't think that you can go through the squeezing process, but you can't go through the filtration process. Because if you don't go through the filtration process, you'll produce dirty oil. Without going through the filtration process, you can add things to people's life that was never supposed to be there. So never skip the steps. Let the process happen because what comes out of it is pure olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil. Right? Not just olive oil, but extra virgin olive oil. The good stuff. Right? I'm, I'm done. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I'm going to come to you. But Jeremiah, I heard God say, uh, in this season, you guys are understanding how to build on another level. You and your wife are learning how to build for the future. Not living in the moment, but building for the future. You guys are taking this process of how to take things that seem like they don't fit and make them mesh. He said, take this process at, of taking pieces that don't work and making them work a lesson on how to produce for the next season. This won't be the, the, the last house that you guys get. This is the first of many. You guys will get to a point where you're able to give away a house because you've lived through the sacrifice of not having what you wanted to have to produce. Take this moment of learning as reward because the reward that's coming later is just going to seem like it's unfair. You guys produce out of things that are not supposed to work, but they work for you. I can't take Jeremiah's shoes and make them fit me and walk the same path that you've been on. But you and Yolanda's shoes fit each other perfectly to mesh together to walk this path out there that's going to produce something like never before. But the reward that you guys are going to get out of the sacrifice is going to be mind-blowing. He said, just take this moment as reward because you've reached a new level, but there's going to be trouble that comes to try to break it back down. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, I never can remember your name. Sandy. Sandy, God says, continue to let your spirit change atmospheres. You may never say a word, but your sure presence changes the atmosphere. So whatever mood or aura that Sandy lets off, that's what the room is going to be like. 
If Sandy's upset, the room is going to be upset. If Sandy's happy, the room is going to be happy because your spirit radiates everywhere you go. So continue to con keep your spirit connected vertically so it can produce horizontally. Amen? Amen. Apostle Libby, this is for you and your husband. He said, this is going to be the season of reward for you guys. A season called sweatless victories. Where you guys don't have to work for it to produce, but it'll just produce on its own. Because that man right there has done things for people that nobody would ever know. That man right there will change your mindset if you just stick around long enough. And the people that he has influenced has gone on to influence other people, but God have not paid you guys for the sacrifice that you both made, for the diligence that you both made. It may not seem like y'all was working together in certain points of your life, but you were always working together, whether you was going that way and he was going that way, but y'all was both coming back to meet in the middle. But you imparted something to everybody that you passed by on the path that you guys took. And he said, I have not paid you guys for it. So this will be the season of sweatless victories for you, whether you're moving or not. Amen? Amen. Amen. Mike, I hear God say, continue to be an impartation to boys that are broken. You don't know the impact that you're leaving on the children that you mentor, the children that you encounter, the children that you have conversations with, because some of them don't have fathers, some of them don't have mothers, but you are being both to them in this season. He said the things that you didn't even get in your life, that you didn't even think that you can produce, you're producing in these children that are making a difference. And it seems like nothing is working right now, but God says, I'm getting, to, I'm getting ready to turn things around to work in your favor. So instead of the wind blowing against you guys, the wind is about to blow you guys forward. He said, don't take everything to heart. Don't take everything as an attack on us. It's, an, it's a setup to push you guys forward. In this season, let this be the strongest bond that you guys have. You can love the children. You can love your mom. You can love your friends. But let this be the strongest bond in this season. Because what you two produce is going to be outstandingly mind-blowing. Because she has a part and you have a part. But together, you make a full meal. You can feed them on a mental level. You can feed them on a physical level. You can feed them in the area where they're at, but she brings the spiritual aspect that will take it to the next level. I see a day where you guys have a center, like the YMCA, where kids come and just get fed. Not fed all the time through food and fork, but fed with their spirit, fed through an area where nobody else can touch them, but you guys did the work. And this center is going to be life-changing for so many kids. They're going to go on to be actors. They're going to go on to be athletes. They're going to go on to be senators, presidents. But it's the impartation that you guys did that activated what they needed to get through. If you guys never activated these kids, they would have been down a wide path that led to destruction. So let this activation that you guys do now on your regular nine to five, you on your nine to five, you on your nine to five, even though it's not what you expected it to be, you're still producing oil that's influencing the world. So be encouraged in this season. Be strengthened in this season because you're producing whether you like it, whether you like the results or not. That's how God told me to say it. Whether you like the results or not, you're producing in this season. Amen. Amen. I'm done. Mama Dolores, God says stop worrying about them kids. Stop stressing your life out over them kids. You work to get to where you're at. It's time for them to work to get to where they want to be. Stop worrying about them kids. I promise you, the pains and aches that you feel is from carrying them kids. 
the, the sleepless nights that you have is from carrying those kids. God said, let them go and let me take care of it. <laughs> this your granddaughter? What's your name? Tasia. God said, you don't know the impartation or the connection that you've made by connecting with your grandmother. By you staying diligent, coming to church, your life is beginning to change. I remember you used to sit over there with a hoodie on, quiet, never speaking. Now you're over here in a, what I call a dangerous corner because they always acting up. But your life is starting to produce. Your continence has changed from the first time I met you. You've always been beautiful, but your beauty is radiating now because you're connected spiritually, vertically first. Now your horizontal is nothing like it ever was. God said, take this moment and evaluate things that are around you. People that you're not supposed to be connected to start to cut them off. Things that you're not supposed to be connected to start to cut them off. Trust me, I've been there. It's hard. It's hard to, to cut people off who you feel like are supposed to be part of your life. And you want to see more for them because you're getting more. But they don't want to, they don't want to impart or take part of what you're doing. they rather watch you do it and then receive the overflow. But God said they will never get the full measure unless you cut them off. Everybody has to have a relationship. Everybody has to have an encounter for their life to be changed. You had your encounter. You imparted what you need to impart. Now it's time to let go. Amen. Sharonda, can you hug her? Um, I'm done. I'm done. Uh, <laughs> she rise. I said I was done. I'm sorry. Uh, God said, what you and Tim are walking into is challenging, but it's going to be rewarding once you put the work in. So the arguments that y'all had, the frustrations that y'all had, counted as seed. Because in this season, like I said at the beginning, God is, I mean, the enemy is coming to attack relationships. And he's causing life situations to cause frustration and friction to get guys to move or get people to move away from each other or not feel connected or not have the strong bond that they have. I'm going to be honest with you. Over the last probably month, life has kicked me in the rear. And it has made me and my wife rub each other the wrong way. But we understand that this is a moment to try to get us to push away from each other, but this is the moment to pull closer to each other. So take the friction of life to bring you guys closer. I'm not saying that y'all not close now or y'all don't have a relationship, but this is the moment where you dig deep and pull even closer. I've been married for 15 years, but in the last month, I have learned more about my wife from the frictions of life that I never thought possible. So let the frictions of life pull you guys closer. It breaks off things that we've been carrying that we never thought that was uh, not aligned with one another. But it causes us to pull closer. So take this season of friction to pull you guys closer. Amen. And tell him I'm looking to see him sitting right next to you. I know it's hard and it ain't got to be every Sunday, but I'm looking for Tim to come sit next to you. So personally tell him when you get home, I said I want to see him in the place next week. Because he's not able to get to the point he wants to get to because he won't make the full connection. As men, we have this hard exterior where we feel like we don't want nobody to control us. We don't want nobody to tell us what to do. We don't want nobody to, to feel like they have control over our life. But as long as he's in control of this car, it's always going to go like this. It's never go straight like it's supposed to. It's a sacrifice. It's hard. It's many a Sundays where I get up like, yeah, I'm good. I catch him on live. But then conviction comes in and makes me get dressed and get here before everybody else. 
it's hard at first. But the more that he sacrifices, the easier it'll get. The more that we give up, the more that he'll give up. If God has nowhere or no room to come in and impart, he'll never be able to deposit because we always feel like we're full. But we're full of ourselves and not full of him. So I'm standing with you. No, I'm always standing with you. That it's going to be a day where Tim is sitting next to you. Not just sitting next to you, but operating the same way that Sharice is operating. Because Tim is called to a, a, a group of men that nobody else can connect with but Tim. But they'll still be down destruction if Tim doesn't make the sacrifice. Amen? I love you. All right, somebody come get this mic before I start again. But before I go, is there anybody in any pain or need healing for any reason? It could be mental. It could be physical. It could be emotional. No? All right, Apostle Shiraz. Man, what a powerful word. What a powerful word. If there's anyone in the house today, um, you have been walking the wide path. And you know from the, hearing the word of God today that you need to come off the wide path and enter into the narrow path. If that's you, just raise your hand. God cares so much about us. Um, he cares about what we care about. He's concerned about what we're concerned about. And if that's your t you today, you have an opportunity to turn and make a narrow walk. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy, but it will be the purpose or the destiny that God has called you to walk. Amen. Amen. And sometimes as Christians, we may think that because we come to church that everything is hunky-dory and it's not. It's not about that. It's about your relationship. It's about your commitment to God. Coming to church is just is not enough. You got to have a relationship. Because life be life, and as my sister say. But if you don't have that personal relationship, that personal connection, that come on, y'all. If you don't have it, then you just you just you just existing. God don't want you to exist. He wants you to dominate. Hallelujah. If you want to, if you desire to give your life back to the Lord, you thought all of this time I was coming to church and I was doing everything right. But come to find out you was just existing. But if you want to walk that purposeful path, if that's you, just raise your hand. It doesn't matter your age, your gender. Eh. Your race, yeah, it all my shot. God still loves you. Facebook, he still cares. Amen. So everyone is saved. All right. Amen. All right, so we're going to get ready for our offering. I haven't done this in so long. <laughs> Let's get ready for our offering, amen. Amen. Y'all ready to give? Ooh. Let's go, let's go. Thank you, Apostle. Thank you so much. All right. Um, everyone's ready to give. Have you if you need an envelope, raise your hands. We have ushers that are here to assist you. Amen. Amen. If the children want to get a little candy money, come on, get your little candy money. God bless you with some more candy money. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, we're gonna begin. We're gonna uh, begin from the back, from the rear. Amen. And you're gonna come and come around and come down the middle aisle, please. The middle aisle. 
Hey, man, we're going to give. Hey. Instructions for sewing is on both screens. Directly after offering, we're going to have our announcements. <laughs> Apostle Sharana, can you pray over the offering? Has everybody had the opportunity to give? Okay. Um, we'll wait. Just point to the offering receptacle. Say, this is my seat. Though it leaves my hand, it never leaves my life. I have increase, overflow, and abundance. And we thank you, Lord, that it will meet the needs of the house. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You look real nice sitting right there. Have a sit down. Stay right there. You look real good sitting right there because that's where you're supposed to be. That's where you're supposed to be. People have overlooked you, sir, mm, mm, mm. but God has not forgotten about you. He's not forgotten about your kindness. He's not, he has not forgotten about your giving. It's your giving that has gotten you to where you are today. God says he has not forgotten about you. You are in the right posture and in the right position. I hear the Lord say, he said, keep your heart open. You guard your heart a lot. But God says in this season, keep your heart open because I'm getting ready to do some new things for you. And that's the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Apostle getting ready to call on you more too. I don't, I don't know. I just see him calling you. <sighs> but, whew, okay, Lord. <laughs> You ready for the announcement so we can wrap it up? Praise the Lord, everyone. I'm Apostle Prude. I am so very excited about the upcoming conference, regional conference, of the Congress of Apostolic and Prophetic Ministries here in Cleveland, Ohio at New Hope Fellowship Church. This month, April the 20th, it's going to be phenomenal. We have a lineup of speakers in the morning in our workshops. Registration for the workshops is only $35. Night service is free. Listen, it is a phenomenal time of strengthening cross-pollinization for ministers. Listen, if you're in the ministry, you need refreshing. You need to attend this conference. It's going to bless your life. April the 20th, starting at 9 o'clock in the morning, New Hope Fellowship Church in the beautiful Renaissance City of East Cleveland, Ohio, 16100 Euclid Avenue. I'm looking to see you in the place. Praise the Lord, everybody. Apostle Prude again. I'm excited again, as usual. I want to make another announcement. Listen, 30 years of teaching the prophetic, 30 years of our prophetic school, we've got recognized. We are now an accredited school. We can actually offer a degree in the prophetic. We are the very first in the country. They created this degree for us. CFI is an accrediting board that accredits Christian schools. We are the first and only accredited prophetic school. So what does this mean? You can take courses in the prophetic and receive a that associate's degree, later on a bachelor's degree, and ultimately even a doctorate in the prophet. I'm so excited. This is going to be launching out in March. If you want information, call the number at the bottom. It is going to be absolutely excited. The 
Cleveland Prophetic Institute is the very first accredited prophetic school. If you want to get a degree, and if you've been through the school, you can take some very simple remedial courses and allow you to get a degree on speed. Isn't that amazing? Looking forward. Call this number on the bottom. This is possible. Guess what, guys? It's the 2024 UP Conference, Unapologetically Prophetic. And this year's theme is Honoring the Fathers. Guys, I'm so excited. Last year, we had people from all over the United States, and from Netherlands, from Carousel, South Africa, Jamaica, you name it, they were here. I'm so excited. So many people shared about the excellence of the conference and that they really got stirred to want to prophesy. Come on, somebody. That was the whole key and the whole purpose of the conference. But we're going to have it this year, August 16th and 17th at the Residence in Cleveland Avon Emerald Event Center. Don't forget to book your room. And guess what, guys? We're going to end the conference at New Hope Fellowship Church on August the 18th. All right, so I hope to see you there. And also, I'll be highlighting my other network, the Global Council of Apostolic and Prophetic Women. So, guys, go check that on the, out on Eventbrite. This year's honorees on that Saturday will be Chief Apostle Joseph Prue and internationally known Apostle John Eckhart, two pioneering prophetic fathers of the faith. We want to refresh them, encourage them, and show them how much we love them for all their years of pioneering in the prophetic, along with other prophetic fathers in the Cleveland surrounding areas and new arising prophetic fathers. So guess what, guys? I'll also be sharing a list of the phenomenal speakers. So save the date and go register on Eventbrite. And guys, I hope to see you there. Come and meet Iron Tribe Network at Apostolic Prophetic Ministries and a list of so many people. My husband and I want to see you there. God bless you. It's going up. They be telling me I'm unapologetically. I open up my mouth. God feels like he resides in me. As a scribe with Iron Tribe in a song, in a vision, out of belly because I say what I see, what I hear, what I sense, what I feel. Don't forget Get it. This is Dr. Anise. I'm unapologetic. That's real. Be encouraged. I love you. Shalom. Very quickly. Um, so today is our healing school. So we're actually in our second to last class. I'll actually be teaching tonight. So we got some fun stuff prepared. Even if you have never been to a healing school, you can come. It's not like that. Um, you have the option to participate via Zoom or come in person. It's a beautiful day. So you can come in person. Amen. All right. Don't forget about the food bank. Amen. The dates are on the screen here. Our marriage ministry hosted by Apostle Steve and Melanie Smith. This Friday, April 19th, 7 p.m. And of course, our annual uh, regional conference starts April 20th. Um, you want to be here? Don't miss out. It's going to be phenomenal. Good teaching. And the School of the Prophets, which is April 27th at 10 a.m. Amen. And that concludes our announcements for today. Amen. We're getting ready to close.